Hey everyone, I'm Coral and welcome back to my channel. This is Salem and he's only here because I disturbed him from his slumber in my closet. Anyways, I'm here today with my book haul for June 2020. Well, I did make an order with Book Outlet at the very end of what month was last month? May? This was before I heard, or I guess before it all came out, that like they are purposely not working with black YouTubers because basically what they implied was that black booktubers like aren't family friendly enough. So I'm not giving them my money anymore. I would just want to come out with that though. I did, there was an order that came in. Um, or there was an order that I put in before that all came out. So I'm really fucking bummed, honestly, that they just um, were so shitty about it and then like totally doubled down on that shittiness by trying to excuse their behavior by implying that, like I said, black booktubers are not family friendly enough. So anyways, I bought some shit from there. Um, first one being a book called Into the Jungle by Mm. Erica Farinick. This is her most recent book and I was super intrigued because if you have like any sort of story that happens in some sort of wilderness like it doesn't matter the setting like it could be in the mountains or in the desert or in the jungle and I'm gonna be super excited about it. Um, this is a thriller that takes place in Bolivia uh, this is about a, a young woman who's had kind of a rough life. It seems like she's been in, in, she's been in and out of foster homes and stuff like that. She finally ages out of the foster system and is kind of like, oh, what do I do now? Uh, because our foster system isn't very fucking good. So, uh, she decides to take a teaching position overseas. She goes to Bolivia and the teaching position falls through, um, but she kind of hangs out with some of the people she's met there and eventually she meets um, another young man who is native to Bolivia, I believe, and um, he, something happens, like a family emergency happens and he's either like, okay, listen, you can stay here in this city where you don't really know anybody or you can come with me into the jungle and she's like, I don't know what to do. So she follows him into the jungle um, to deal with this family emergency and it's a thriller. So like something suspenseful has to happen and it sounds really fun. I also picked up um, A False Report, A True Story of Rape in America by T. Christian Miller and Ken Armstrong. This um, I heard about because I watched the Netflix adaption that this, that was based off of this. I think it was called Unbelievable. I'm pretty sure I should have looked that up, but I didn't. It came out last year, I think. And it's basically the story of a young girl named Marie who like the character in our last book um, has been through the foster system and it's kind of, uh, you know, has no resources once she ages out. She doesn't know what to do. She's had a hard life. Like she was bounced back and forth between foster homes. And one night there's like a, a home invasion and she's raped and police start to investigate it, but they very quickly turn on the girl. Her name is Marie. I can't remember if I already said that, but her name is Marie. They turn on Marie and they basically tell her that they don't believe her and she's made it all up. Uh, and she kind of recants her story because she doesn't know what to do if they don't believe her. Then it turns out that there is a serial rapist actually and what, you know, what she was saying was true. And this person's also raped other young ladies. So, um, yeah, that's what this book's about. This is based on a true story. Um, I believe it has the like transcripts and stuff like that from, um, the case and things like that. Super sad. Uh, the Netflix adaption is good and also very upsetting and sad and it makes you want to strangle lots of people. I also picked up Blackfish City by Sam J. Miller. This is, hmm, I don't really know much about this one, but the cover is so fun. I think it's mm, like a sci-fi dystopian book. I know that there was, um, like in this world that this takes place in, um, there was a 
like climate apocalypse type of event and now people are living in Antarctica in this city called Blackfish City um, but the city has become corrupt um, there is lots of crime there is an epidemic going on and basically this woman shows up and she's riding an orca and she has like a polar bear with her and they call her the Orcamancer and she picks like four people from like very different backgrounds and um, kind of tells them how they can save their city and you know they set out to do that so um, I'm really curious if anyone's read this. This is a pretty recent release. I think it came out, I don't know, sometime in like maybe the last two years. I don't know. Uh, the time escapes me. I really like this cover with like the neon lights and it sounds cool. I also picked up The Arrangement by Robin Harding. This is another thriller about a college student and she's struggling to find ways to pay for living. <laughs> because uh, because we live in America. Friend suggests that she start being a sugar baby. So she finds, oh, if, if you're not familiar with that, it's like the sugar baby, sugar daddy thing where um, two consenting individuals, usually it's a younger woman and an older man who has some wealth. Um, they become, begin an arrangement where the um, wealthier man kind of dotes on the younger woman and, you know, buys her things. If you are a sugar baby, obviously there is some sort of arrangement. Like I said, it's not always a sexual thing. Sometimes it is. It really depends on the people who, you know, are in this relationship. But this young woman, she is, she decides to become a sugar baby and she finds a sugar daddy and um, she kind of catches feelings and he's like, no, sorry, I have a family and she becomes kind of obsessed and then the body of the man is found and I'm assuming we don't know whether the woman did it or not um, and we find out maybe or maybe, I don't know, I don't know actually that part of it. I don't know if she's like blamed or if we know for certain that she did or did not do it, uh, but he is found dead and that's all I know about it. Um, this sounds fun. I've heard a lot of really good things about Robin Harding's books. I have one that I want in a Goodreads giveaway that I didn't read. I can't, I think it's called Her Pretty, Her Pretty Face? I can't remember. But there's this one too. I've heard good things about it. The last book outlet book I bought is the Need by Helen Phillips. And I heard about this um, on a podcast I really love called Reading Glasses. One of the hosts recommended it um, and I'm really not sure exactly what this is about. I can't remember what the host said that turned me on to it. I feel like I heard more from this host that made me interested than like the premise tells us, but I can't remember what that is. Like I said, um, the premise, the synopsis on the back of the book says, that this woman, she is with her two children at night and she hears a home intruder. She gets up to go investigate it. And this person like knows a lot about her, um, things that a stranger shouldn't know, um, but she doesn't know who this person is. And that's all I know. It seems like, I don't know. Let me read part of this to you. It says, she slips down an existential rabbit hole where she must confront the dualities of motherhood, the ecstasy and the dread, the languor and the ferocity and the banality and the transcendence as the book hurdles toward a mind bending con conclusion. Sorry about that. I don't really know about this. I saw someone on my good, I, I looked on my Goodreads to see if it had a different synopsis on there. Um, it's the same one, but then I saw somebody on my friend's list on Goodreads who described it as like, if the book Black Matter, oh my god, if the book Dark Matter had been told from the perspective of a woman instead, um, and I'm assuming they mean Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which I really loved when it came out, so I was like, okay, well that's probably why I felt like I needed to read it. Okay, I also picked up the recently released Devolution by Max Brooks. He is the person who wrote World War Z and the Zombie Survival Guide. Um, I loved World War Z. 
So I obviously wanted to pick this up when I heard that he was writing a new book and it was about the Sasquatch. And um, this seems like it's going to be told in like journals, which is cool. There is some sort of like massacre that happens. And the very end of this synopsis says it's part survival narrative, part bloody horror tale, part scientific journey into the boundaries between truth and science fiction. And like, um, I'm just super excited to get to this one. Um, I'm hopefully going to pick this up tonight. I just finished the book that I was reading, so hopefully it's good. Um, I am going to do a full on review of just this book once I've done. I want to do that with new, re new releases that I read. Um, so if you're interested in that, I will do that when I'm when I'm done reading it. Sorry, I burped a little bit in my throat. Okay, I also, this, I won in a Goodreads giveaway, which seems to happen, like, I won't win anything for, like, years, and then I'll win, like, three things in a row, and then won't win anything again for a long time. Um, I just, what was the other one I, I just won, he started it by Samantha Downing, that was, like, two months ago, and then I got a notification that I had won this. This is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. It has come out. It came out last month, but I'm still very excited to have an art copy of this. This is about these four Native American men who are kind of haunted by something that happened in their past. Um, and I believe it, it was like on a hunting trip that this happened. Um, I don't know like how they're being haunted. I really don't know much about it, but I really, um, have liked what I've read from Stephen Graham Jones, which isn't very much at all, actually. I've read like a novella and a short story. So I'm excited to get into this. I always hear really good things about his writing and I know it's more, um, what's the word? It's not, it's more like literary horror than like straight up like splatterpunk or, you know, something like that, um, which I can appreciate. And I'm really trying to read more works that are own voices which means that it is in this case um an indigenous person who is writing about indigenous people uh i also found um let's see these i bought from an etsy shop that i probably won't shop at again unless they start including pictures of the spines because i definitely would not have spent i don't know like 15 bucks on this even though it is hard to find. However, I mean, this one was okay. So it's really, it was a gamble that I took and I won't do it again, I guess. I don't know, but I'm not gonna share the name of the shop because I don't have a glowing review necessarily. But this is Dead Time Story by Mar Margaret. Yeah, Margaret Bingley. This one is pretty hard to find. So like, I guess I'm lucky that I found it, but. I all, like also I would have skipped over this copy if I had seen the damage to it. The shape that it's in is not very good at all. This is a story about like ghosts who possess babies and well not babies but like kids, little kids and make them evil. That's all I know about it. This is Hide and Seek by William M. Carney. This is about siblings who are like super freaking smart. They're just like total geniuses and uh, they find out that they are the product of some genetic experimentation and then they are kidnapped and brought back to, um, a, where does it say? South America by a brilliant scientist known as El Doctor, which is very creative. Um, <laughs> and uh, he says that he's the one who created them and he does more experiments on them. I went out and bought some things. I didn't go out. I bought them from the privacy of my own home. But I bought some things that I've been looking at and hadn't pulled the trigger on. Um, the first one being The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. I read her, um, the, the first book in this series called The Fifth Season, which was this crazy science fiction novel. Um, I don't even know how to give it a good synopsis because the things that happen in this and like the way this world is, it's like mind blowing and so hard to explain. But basically it's kind of a post-apocalyptic world where these things called seasons keep happening 
and there are basically different catastrophic like apocalyptic events like um acid like the clouds are acid suddenly like there's acid rain or um you know earthquakes and and stuff like that there are also these people they call origins and they're able to like i don't know manipulate the earth somehow a lot of them don't have the training needed to not let their emotions do things to the earth does that make sense i don't know um so they're like feared and mistrusted and outcast from societies and the book follows one woman in three different timelines of her life and it's just a really great book it's a little bit hard to get into at first probably not like entry level science fiction but if you stick it out it is such a rewarding story it leaves off on this insane cliffhanger kind of i mean like this crazy event happens and then it's just like okay goodbye and you're like what so um <laughs> this is the second book I, the obelisk gate i'm so excited um to see what happens in this one i also bought the between by tanana reeve do she's a horror author i have been missing out on and this is this, the story of a man who as a child he was in an accident in the water he almost drowns and his grandmother saves him but dies in the process so um now he is an adult he's under some stress in his life um his wife what is she? She is a judge and she is getting threatening letters by somebody who she prosecuted in the past. And he's also having these crazy nightmares about the drowning incident, the almost drowning, the near death experience, I guess I mean, that he had as a child. And he starts to have um, trouble distinguishing reality from things that aren't real and it sounds like it's going to be a spooky mind bender. Next on my list is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead and he is an author I have been putting off for far too long but this is his most recent book. This is about um, a boy in the 1960s who is sent to kind of a, a school for delinquents like a boarding school and um he has trouble there obviously it is not a good place as we can all imagine like even a place like that for white boys is not going to uh be good to go to so we can all imagine how a school for young black men is gonna be you know I also bought Parable of the Sword by Octavia Butler. This is one my um, sister-in-law has been telling me I should read for a while. This is a dystopian post-apocalyptic book as well. I seem to have picked a couple of those. This takes place in 2025. The world as we know it is not the world as we know it. And um, there is like, uh, I don't know, what does it say? It says global climate change and economic crisis lead to social chaos. So basically the world is in chaos. I know that um, these characters are in California and there are water shortages, which is something that is super real and like kind of makes my heart beat really fast when I think about that happening. So this character and her family, they live in like a closed off neighborhood outside of Los Angeles. And um, they're okay. They're like safe from the outside world. But because of this, they kind of don't pay attention to anything that's going on in the outside world. And the main character in this has something called hyper empathy hyper empathy which means she is very sensitive to other people's feelings um if something happens and her family dies she is like kind of left on her own and has to travel um to safety and that's all i really know about this um but this octavia butler is a very very well-known science fiction author and um it's taken me too long to get to her books this was from last month's owl crate um, this is called Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I have like hiccup burps. 
not super duper clear on what this is about. This might not be a book that I would have picked up on my own, uh, but hopefully it's good. Um, this is about a young girl who is kidnapped as a young child because of a, an ability she has to steal people's memories. I they call it a memory thief. I'm not really sure what that entails. So she is stolen by like the royal court um, to like do this for the king, do this memory thief thing. And um, somehow she escapes from that and now she is kind of a spy, I think. And um, people are very resentful uh, f for what she has done in her past, what she had to do, what she was forced to do. And that's all I really know about this. Let me know if you've read this because um, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Salem, you're being so rude, Salem. <laughs> he has no scruples. This also came in the Owl Crate for May. This is a graphic novel called Witchy by Ariel. Oh, Ariel Slam Slamet Riaz. I feel like I'm saying that all wrong, but it's a cute little graphic novel. The back says it's about a place where there are witches and the longer your hair is, the more power you have. Like it, it's like, if your hair is longer, you're more powerful, but they will kill anybody whose hair is too long. I'm not sure if these people can cut their hair themselves or if like that's not an option for them. I don't know because I haven't read it, I guess, but I do have a lot of questions about this. I've been looking for a hardcover copy of The Shining by Stephen King, um, one of the book club editions, like the old, I believe it's Doubleday editions, um, and that is very fucking hard to find if you can't spend $200 on one, which I can't. I could never justify doing that, um, although I'm very jealous of the people who can, I guess. Um, so I was like for months I've been looking on eBay. I get very quickly outbid. Then I found this one. This is in such great quality. It has like one little kind of like a puncture wound up here, but you can hardly tell. Um, and I got this for 30 fucking dollars, which is so crazy. And like the whole time this bid, um, the, the time for the auction, was going on i was like oh my gosh i hope nobody sees this i hope nobody sees it and um yeah i got lucky i can't i cannot believe my luck it's bananas there are three more books i have here these were part of the june nightworms things um i am not going to talk about the synopsis because i did that i'll leave a thing to the video of my unpackaging if you're very interested in hearing more about those. Um, the first one was Ghoul by Brian Keane. Then we have Those Below the Treehouse by Matt Hayward. I'm very excited to read that one. And we also had The October Boys by Adam Millard. This was jam-packed this month, full of three books. That sounds very exciting. I'm super excited to get to Those Below the Treehouse. Uh, but that's it. That's all I have for you this month today in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I don't know, look for me later, I guess. Um, hopefully I'll have a review video for Devolution very soon. It doesn't seem very long. It seems like it'll be exciting and I'm excited to read it. Um, this video is kind of long. Sam, you got anything to add? No. Okay. Well, that's all. We'll see you later. Bye!